the word itself is kind of an etymology such as, um, let's just take the Hebrew letter A. It uh, looks a lot like our A today, on it sits on its side. Why? Because it means ox head, and it was the horns and the ox's nose, okay? I mean, that's difficult, isn't it? Languages are so interesting when you take the time to, to follow through. But we're going to uh, open your Bibles, if you would, to Second Timothy, one of the easiest books to find because it follows First Timothy. New Testament. <laughs> All right. Paul is preparing Timothy to take the word forward so that it counts. You know, that's what's important. A lot of people want to take the word forward, and I think they think if they just hold the Bible in their hand and walk forward, they're doing that. Maybe to a degree they are. But... You must have knowledge and understanding of the Word, and you must convey that same knowledge and understanding, which is not your necessarily knowledge or understanding, but God's, into the mind of that person. You know, that's what the word masara in the Hebrew tongue means, is the original footnotes, which were not copied forth in the King James. And for this reason, I recommend the companion, which has the stronger Masoretic uh, points brought forward. It means, the word in the Hebrew tongue means to put a thought from my mind into yours and never change it. It's got to hold solid. Can't, it's locked in. And that's the beauty of, um, of the Masara, the original footnotes, as they uh, lock in the scriptures where no one can change them or alter them without it sticks out like a sore thumb, okay, to someone that has that knowledge and wisdom. And what is that knowledge? Simply stick with God's truth. Paul is preparing Timothy to go out and teach. So this is going to be giving you some of the better examples of things you should do to help someone plant seeds or to carry the truth forward. Chapter 2, 2 Timothy, let's take it with verse 1. We'll just spend a little time here. <clears throat> and he says, verse 1, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Grace is what? Unmerited favor. I mean, he doesn't expect someone to be perfect because you're not going to run across all that many perfect people when you're planting seeds. They're going to have faults. Unfortunately, all of us do. And this... Uh, in a sense, says, have a little unmerited, give them a little unmerited favor if they're believers. If they believe on Christ and repent, forgive them. All right? Verse 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. Not, not casting pearls before swine, but to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. That's the purpose, is... The, the word is pregnant. It grows. It spreads. And uh, that's the purpose of bringing the word forward. But don't ever throw a hitch into it. Do you know the main hitch that most people throw into it themselves, unfortunately? Some good teachers seem that cannot prevent throwing themselves as a hitch into the word. That becomes a stumbling block. The word must flow openly and freely from the Word of God, leaving man out of the equation, or pretty soon if you let man into the equation, Satan's going to be right on his heels, okay, to deceive either the man or the listener. So when you're teaching, well, what are you going to teach? Well, I hope it's God's Word. Is that difficult? Well, I have this little paper I read, that, but throw it in the trash. Trash, junk, garbage in, garbage out. God's Word is forever. It is written. It's, it comes to pass exactly as it's written, so be it. Those that like to apostatize themselves, let them apostatize themselves. That means be drawn off. But you stay focused. Stay in the Word of God, creating that road, that path that keeps you on track 
where nonsense goes out the window and you stay on course, okay? That's, that's what you want to teach other people. You don't want to be guilty of misleading people. Do you know that's one of the greatest sins? You just go around misleading a few people and see what happens to your life. Okay, uh, be able to teach others to pass that along gently and firmly. Verse 3, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of uh, Jesus Christ. In other words, um, uh, you're going to have some, there's going to be some people resent it. Who cares? If they want to be stupid, let them stay stupid and keep plowing. You know, don't, don't sweat it a lot. All right? Verse 4, No man that warreth entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. You always want to please your commander. Who is your commander? Our commander-in-chief is Almighty God. And he's laid forth some pretty easy record. His plan of the day is always easy to follow. All right? It may be hard for us, but it's easy to understand what it is he chooses we do in our method of following Him. Uh, I don't know, has God chosen you to be a soldier? That means to spiritually carry the war forward against Satan. Truth. Okay? His Word. Verse 5, And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully? No, you, well, well, what does that mean? Well, God's Word is the law. And you've got to do it by his word, not some funny book. Well, you don't understand. This little funny book was written by a man that had great training. In what? In what? You know, you, you, can, you can allow your... You're too late in the day to allow yourself to be tripped up. Stick with God's word. Be pure. That does not mean that you can't have a sense of humor. That does not mean that certainly you alleviate and cease using common sense. But that you know it is what God says that's important. Philosophers come by the dozens. Oh, but there's some good ones. In what? And I'm not knocking them. I know that, you know, positive thinking is a wonderful thing and it never hurt anybody as long as it doesn't detribe or detract you away from God's Word. It has done many people that way in what they labeled positive thinking. It's one of, Satan loves to use it. He used it on Jesus uh, at the, uh, at the uh, Mount of, Trent, of Temptation, Matthew chapter 4. Quoted the Bible perfectly except for twisting the last little phrase about 180 degrees. Now, a lot of Christians, unfortunately, don't even know where that twist comes in at, though it's printed. It's written. And there it is, to mislead. Verse 6, The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Uh, Don C. Eckhart, the first fruits, all right? And um, uh, if the, that means also so many other things. Uh, are you a fruit inspector? If you go over to an orange tree and it's tasting like a pineapple, something's wrong, okay? Somebody's trying to deceive you, in other words. Um, you check it out before you start teaching it to somebody else, all right? Well, how do I check it out? God's Word, of course. Verse 8, Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. That means God's Word. It was promised. It was promised in Psalms 22 that he would. In Psalms 23, the, the great uh, Good Shepherd Psalm, many people think that's a psalm of death. It isn't. It's a psalm of resurrection, of life, uh, to the living of Christ's resurrection. His crucifixion came in that 22nd Psalm. Verse 9, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even into bonds, or I, they even tell me in prison. But the word of God is not bound. It shall never be bound. God's word cannot be captured. God's word will be the same now. This earth age will change. God's word's not. 
It's never going to change. It cannot be bound. Isn't it something? Paul himself wrote a great deal of the New Testament while he was in prison. For what purpose? For teaching the gospel. Not for robbing banks. Not for misleading people. Not for being a crook. But from teaching the truth. The truth will... You cannot be one of the most popular people in the world if you're going to teach the truth without any uh, allowances, uh, saddle soap in here and saddle soap in there. Do you all know what that means? Buttering people up and sugarcoating stuff over. God doesn't like that. He wants you to teach it the way he has, the way it is written, with no apology. And if that wants to upset somebody, they need to be upset. If they learn to love the truth, you have saved the soul. Okay, from no doubt the great apostasy. All right, then. And we get right along here with, um, in as much as he has done that, verse 10. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Etern- Do you know how long eternal is? That's forever and ever and ever. You can earn that. It can be yours. And you earn it by serving Him. By um, And everything He does, well, what is this He's doing? And He's teaching people how to teach. And that's what God's elect are supposed to do. Is to teach God's Word, not some man, not some self-proclaimed thought, but teaching the Word of God. Verse 11, it is a faithful saying. You can count on it. For if we be dead with Him, we shall also live with Him. Why? It's His guarantee forever. Now, uh, the world is not necessarily going to embrace you you know, there are, at this point in time, a lot of times if you mention Christian, there's snickers. You know, I'm talking about in the national media and so forth. Who cares? If they want to be stupid, let them be stupid. They can't help it, I suppose. So uh, make no apology ever for God's Word. He doesn't like that. Uh, verse 12, If we suffer, we shall also reign with Him. If we deny Him... He also will deny us. In this particular verse, always remember Luke chapter 12, verses 8 through about 12, whereby it states, you can deny him on earth, but don't you dare, if you be one of God's elect, who he's addressing here from verse 10, deny him through the Holy Spirit to witness whenever you're delivered up before the Antichrist. It's called the unforgivable sin, the unpardonable sin. Don't deny him. I don't, I'm not the least bit worried that any one of God's elect will, okay, before the false Messiah. Most of you already have your against God's law. He said, don't you even premeditate what you're going to say. I know a lot of you have little hidden things you'd like to say to Satan. Okay, you can't fool me. I know because I have the same feelings. But you're not supposed to, but whatever you do, you're not going to deny Christ, all right? Uh, verse 13, if we believe not, yet um, he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. It, it doesn't matter whether a person believes or not. Christ is not going to deny himself nor the truth. Right? It doesn't have anything to do with it. People can chuckle about Christianity. The, I don't know who will be... Well, not that we participate in chuckling at losers, but uh, have many regrets. It is written in the um, in the Psalm 37 concerning those that always seem to get ahead when they're evil. It is written in an acrostic, and if you don't have a companion Bible or my study on it, you may have trouble with it because it is in the Hebrew language. Verse 14. Of these things, put them in remembrance. I don't care how often you have to remind them. You remind them. 
You put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, a bunch of malarkey, but to the subverting of the hearers. You are to subvert them into truth. Do you know that the enemy spends all of his trying time, the enemy spends all of his time trying to subvert people away from the truth? And oh, what a machine he has built. A little, well, let me tell you about this little thing. If you, you know, if you uh, do this and if you do that and if you salt it three times and then turn three circles and then say, hallelujah. I'm not mocking any religion now. I'm just saying it's not biblical. Or those people that might say, well, I wonder what kind of burden God's going to put on us today. Do you know that angers him more almost than anything else? He says he'll put a curse on you that won't quit. Because God doesn't put burdens on people. People put burdens on themselves or allow them to be placed there. God will curse you if you try to blame it on him. Is that written? You bet it is. It's very biblical. And he makes it very, very strong. Don't listen to words that have no profit. What what would that be? Something that would take away your eternal promise that was just given you. That would have you listen to a bunch of nonsense, maybe and even deny the Holy Spirit if you weren't careful. You've got to pay attention to God's Word. The 15th verse is why we came here. Study... To show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. Now, mark in your mind the word dividing. It's orthoomio. Okay. Omio. Ortho. Like orthopedic, okay? Don't, now, don't write down orthopedic, okay? It, it means, it's, a, it's really almost a medical term meaning to make a straight cut, okay? I mean to get it right. You make the road split it right down the middle, but you keep the road straight. It means to build a road, divide it, conquer it, keep it straight. Because God's Word is truth, and it is straight. We're going to be using this now as an analogy in many other places. And it helps you to build that road to keep your life together, utilizing common sense. When in the end times especially, you can, it's guaranteed that false teachers will come. Not maybe, will come. And I guarantee you are already in the world today. Are they bad people? They don't think they are. But let me ask you a question. How do you evaluate someone that would pull you away from the true message of God's Word? They're not good people. They're apostates. Call them what they are. You don't have to call them that to their face, but anybody that that does not make the clear cut, awful, straight down the line, Rightly dividing, sticking with God's Word and throwing man's in the trash, is in trouble. You've got to do it His way. You don't make apologies. But, brother, you might offend someone. Tough stuff. Okay. You can't, if you love somebody, you have to correct them. Or otherwise, just pat them on the back and let them slip off into hell. You don't love them. You don't care about them if you don't teach truth. But I just hate to offend someone. If God's Word, if it was ever promised that it wouldn't offend someone somewhere, then maybe we could work something out. But I'm sorry. He said, I did not come to this world to bring peace, but to cause division. To turn mother against daughter, father against son, and so forth. Unfortunately, that's what the truth does. But at the same time, in the overall promise... That one that has the truth, if not unapologetically, they continue anointing and using common sense, not overloading their donkey, but gently leading, as he's teaching Timothy to do here. 
rightly dividing, making that road cut where someone utilize, utilizing common sense can follow the path, the way, into the eternity, rather than slipping off into the ditch of destruction. You got, that's, that's positive, my friend. That is true love when you help someone out of the ditch that they might be in. Well, they just are not ready to listen. Then don't force yourself on them. Never does he insist that we force ourselves on anyone. You see, all you can do is plant the seed as he has told you and then prayerfully leave it in God's hands. It will either grow or the first time the hot sun of Satan's presence hit, falls upon it, that may sound controversial, but it's true. It'll wilt. It can't stand the heat. And so uh, if it dies, then don't you try to pump it back up. Well, I just got to save them. Well, you're, you're not the Savior. You're a servant of the Savior. The Savior is Jesus Christ. He can make it grow when it's ready to grow. Right? That doesn't mean you should ever give up. It doesn't hurt to um, replant. And certainly if someone ever comes to you with a question, answer it. Gently, firmly, and with no excuse. Arthur Omeo. I mean, make the straight cut. Don't waver. Stay on course. You know, that's how people get lost, is getting out in the bushes and taking this trail that's not uh, straightly marked and get lost in the boonies and what are you going to do? You're going to fall on your face a few times and maybe have get chilled a few times before you finally stumble out into something that might make a little sense. So, don't, there, you know, that mistake has been made by so many people, why should you make it over and over and over again? Make the cut. That's to say, utilizing God's Word, whereby it is the denominator of your life telling you which path to take. One more verse, 16. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. It's just, that's just the way it is. You start listening to the ways of the world and men and gossip, you know, People have a lot of fun gossiping about me. Well, God still blesses me. Do you know why? He knows my character can cut it. Okay? Regardless of what someone might say, my character cuts it and I get God's blessing. And I thank Him for that. It takes a lot of repentance on my part to stay um, in line with that. Do you know what I just said? <laughs> this was not confession time. <laughs> right. Thank God he gives me the common sense to pretty well make that straight cut and stick with it. All right. I don't like crooked cuts. If you're going to cut my card, you're going to cut them right. Okay? All right. So, there you have it. Don't, whatever you do in these end times, don't listen to junk. Well, what is junk? Well, anything that is not God's Word is suspect. Okay? Anyone that is well-founded in God's Word can read anything they want to, because you know right away you have spiritual discernment, whether it's junk or whether it has some credit to its, uh, to the words, the, the uh, language. So... Uh, that's, that's up to you. God's children can walk wherever they want to without fear. Why? Hey, we're in charge. The demons have to obey us. If we say, stop, in the name of Jesus, they better be moving or they're going to die. Okay? They know that. So, we, we don't have to take a back seat to anybody. Why? The knowledge of God. The wisdom of God is the most precious. I mean, you can chase money, you can chase houses, cars, fancy this, fancy that. And hey, everybody likes good wheels. Nothing wrong with that. But the most precious thing in the world is God's Word. The truth. Because, you see, 
if you love that truth, he'll add all those other things to you as you need them. That's it. He promises that. He said, I, I know what you need. Don't worry. I'll add it to you, but do my work first. You know, it's right kind of for the boss to have his uh, uh, wishes filled first, right? I mean, that, that happens in everyday life. You know, if you're working for somewhere, you better you better see that the boss's wishes are pretty well uh, taken care of. The plan of business, because that's where the paycheck comes from. If it's not making money, guess whose paycheck's going to stop? I mean, that's just common sense in the, in the worldly thing. But spiritually... Wisdom brings you blessings from on high. And when man forgets about you, God don't. When, when man kind of ignores you, maybe doesn't give you your two cents worth, or a penny, whatever it might be, God won't forget you. God will run your cup over but that's the relationship you have with him, not man. That's why the richest thing to chase or to desire in the world is God's truth, his love. And with that, let's go to the great book of Proverbs, right after the great book of Psalms. It's the easiest book in the world to find. It comes right after Psalms, and if you just open your Bible right in the middle, it'll be in Psalms. and. Or is it Isaiah? Which is it? I guess it's Isaiah that opens right now. <laughs> well, anyway, you know where uh, Proverbs is. Right after Psalms. And I guess I'm going to, I'm going to move over to chapter 1. We're going, we're going to do our covering in chapter 2. But there's one verse you've heard me mention many times. And that's Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. It is the principle of wisdom. It is the God's principle of knowledge. You can't have it without this. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1. The fear, translate it reverence, love. It, this is a Hebrew word that will translate either way. Okay? The reverence of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instructions. They won't listen. But the beginning of wisdom and knowledge is to love God. Why? Well, if you love Him, you're going to pay attention to His Word. Hey, you know, you, you leave God's Word out of your life and you're crippled. Well, uh, what do you mean? Mentally and spiritually. Bad. Because there are so many good things, promises, Written, guaranteed. And you have to study to show yourself approved, rightly cutting that line, whereby it puts you into position of deservership, meaning you deserve those promises. He always remembers. Always. You can count on it. That's why you want to please God and not worry about what some internet might say. Who cares? Okay? If you have God's blessings, you don't need gossip, do you? Do you know what gossip is of? It's of the world. It's some idiot that probably doesn't know the truth anyway and likes to spend time trying to destroy a servant of God with Satan's tricks. And they might even be well-meaning in it because some people uh, run on gossip. And this lecture is not about gossip, okay? Let's keep that way. It's the love of God. That's how you gain wisdom is loving Him. Do you know why? He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will always be with you. There may be times that you will think He has left you high and dry. And just about the time you cleanse your soul and turn to Him... You will feel that hand under you, and he will lift you up and love you and protect you when you use common sense. Don't he appreciates the common sense that he gave you. Not some double talk that man might try to put into your mind. Do you want me to say that again? 
God loves the common sense, the natural instinct that he has placed in you for you to utilize rather than the double talk that some man might try to put into your mind. Always be with God. You cannot con him. You see, he knows what you're thinking, and it's the most stupid thing in the world for some individual to think, well, I'm going to pretend this, that, and the other to God so he'll bless me. Forget it. He, he knows your thought. And he knows your conniving. And he's not going to bless conniving, all right? He will bless covert activity at times, but not conniving. Some might say, well, what's the difference? Well, you'll have to figure that one out through experience, okay? Uh, chapter 2 of the great book of Proverbs, let's go with it. <clears throat> and again, I want, you to, I, want you, I want to remind you again to make the straight cut, to make the right path, to make the right way. Follow it. Do it. Chapter 2, teachings. Listen carefully. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, if you'll tuck them away in your mind, memorize them as best you can. Two, so that thou incline thine ear, open your ear so you can hear, unto wisdom, and apply thine heart to understanding using common sense. Think on it. Meditate on it before you make an action. All right? And then you'll know what's right and you'll know what's wrong. <clears throat> Verse 3. Yea, yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding. Now, what kind of person are we talking here? They're crying for knowledge. They're suffering for it. They're seeking it. They're wanting it. For if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as, as for hid treasures, truth is the most valuable thing in the world. Okay, God's truth is what I'm saying. Five, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. I want you to lock that into your mind with the verse 7 of chapter 1 that I took you there. That's the answer. I'll read it again. Then shalt thou understand the fear, the reverence, the love of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. That's the first precept of finding the knowledge of God is to love Him. <clears throat> you know, that's just common sense within itself, too, is it not? Why, why do you live with someone? Because you love them. Why do you do this or why do you do that? Well, you love it. That is just human nature. And if you love God for His truth, naturally He's going to remember you and bring that knowledge to you. Verse 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom. He does what? Where do I get wisdom? For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. What you have to do is soak it in. Take it within you. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. For who? For the righteous, that's to say people that at least try to do things right. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. Walk where? In the path, in the straight cut, in the narrow. He becomes a buckler as a shield. Well, he sure does do good things for me. Well, you're on the path then. You've built the road in the right place. You're seeking wisdom from he who grants it. Verse 8. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. He keepeth the path of judgment. Do you know what that means? You know what judgment is? That means just. He justifies. Everywhere you walk, if you do it with reverence and seeking and crying out for wisdom and knowledge, from his word. Well, I just can't understand that. Well, ask him. Say, so, Father, clarify that for me. Bam. If you're honest, he's going to give it to you. Okay? Sometimes he'll give you whole paragraphs all at one time, just like that. Bam. 
if you know where to go to get it. Okay? And he preserveth the way of his saints. Preserveth means, what is a way? It's a path. It's a road. And you build it based on that wisdom, on that knowledge. You don't just go chasing off into the dark somewhere, stumbling over bushes, falling in ditches. Uh, possessed people do that and froth at the mouth. You don't do that. You make the straight cut, rightly dividing. You throw trash where trash belongs. You keep wisdom where wisdom belongs. That's in your heart, your mind. Then, verse 9, Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path, every good road. Are you a road maker? You're a lot, you're, hey, you're the captain of your ship, okay? Well, they just shouldn't do that to me. You let them. Don't get off my back, okay? Grow up. Get a life. You are responsible for your life. You make the decisions. Well, I was afraid it would offend them. Well, the heck with them. If they're trying to get you to do something wrong, tell them to take it and, let's see, where do we want to put it? In the trash, of course, all right? You know, um, there's nothing wrong with being a strong person, okay? That draws people to you. And I didn't say to be uh, unkind or anything like that, but to be strong and do what's right in God's eyes, and he will always bless it, okay? He will cut that path. He will protect your path. If there's something waiting for you down there that you've done your very best for, he'll take it, put a sack over it, and throw it in the trash himself. You might never know it was there. That's a promise, in other words. Ten, when wisdom entereth into thine heart, that's to say your mind, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, your soul is yourself. All right? that, that's just stripping everything away. Your soul is yourself. Eleven, discretion. Oh, that's a powerful word. Discretion shall preserve thee. Understanding shall keep thee. Spiritual uh, discretion, spiritual discernment. And your understanding shall keep thee. You're too smart to be, to, to be messed with. Okay? You know where not to go spiritually. You know when to say, I got a wall right there. My road goes this way. Evidently, yours goes that. You don't have to tell them. But stay on the right road, and he will do what? He'll protect that road for you. Now, what happens if you say, oh, well, I'll go with this person a little ways out here in the boonies. Did he say he would protect that road for you? No, he did not. You're on your own. If you want to fall into the pit, you just have to it. But you stay on the smooth cut road, and he will bless you. Verse 12. To deliver thee from the way of evil men. He'll just pluck you right out of their hands. He'll do it. From the man that speaketh forward things, perverse things. You'll know him just like that. Discretion will show him up in your mind when you're loaded and locked with the wisdom of God. Don't put up with it. Verse 13. Who leave the paths. There's that road. You built one who leave the paths of uprighteousness, that's to say doing what's right, to walk in the ways of darkness, that's to say Satan, nonsense, foolishness, words that don't mean anything. Fourteen, who rejoice to do evil and delight in the forwardness of the wicked. That's to say the boldness of it. That is so cute, isn't it? Just I just admire them the way they just... Stand up there and say those smart aleck little things like that. It's so funny. Well, I don't think it is. Okay. But people will do that. You know, you can, I'm, why am I saying that? Well, you can get roped into it real easy if you're not careful. And again, God has a sense of humor. I'm not, I'm talking here about the little sick thing Satan throws in. Do you know that Satan uses, <clears throat> I want to be careful what I'm saying here. Satan many times uses comedy in the media to bring forward his work. 
Now, that's not to say, again, now this, I'm cutting you a pretty straight line here. There is that that is good and there is that that is bad. And you had better have the discretion and the discernment to be able to tell when somebody's trying to take you down Primrose Lane and what they intend to do to you after they get you there. Okay? Uh, that's just sailing your own ship. All right? It's called common sense. You don't want to be like the two Irishmen that were in my um, family in Ireland. They were called Pat and Mike. And they had two horses. They were, the guy gave them two horses, and they couldn't tell them apart. They had a terrible time with this, and finally they said, let's measure how tall they are. And sure enough, Mike's white horse was half a hand taller than Pat's black one. Okay. You got to know the difference between, you know, the, you, you have to be able to think for yourself, to to use discernment. You know, God sends out these little signals to those He loves. Didn't He say, "I'll protect your path," right? And He sends out a little red flasher to you through the Holy Spirit that says, "Buddy, this is looking bad." And the further you go, the deeper it's getting. You're up to your knees already. I mean, he he has a way of letting you know if you'll listen to him. All right? Anyway, well, anyhow, uh, per, 15, whose ways... Now, what is a way? It's a road. It's a path. And we're speaking spiritually here, so you've got to stay with me. Whose ways or roads that are, are crooked and they forward, that's perversively, in their paths. 16. To deliver thee from the strange woman. This is, um, the. It means the apostate. Who's the strange woman you gotta be careful for? Sister Babylon. You know, sister, you know what Babel is? It's, it, Babel just flows over. I got the greatest little things I want to share with you. Sometimes when we get a little time here, we'll, let's talk about this. I know you need to get your life together, and I am the person you need to talk to. And, and I'm not, hey, men are worse than women. I'm just going to be honest with you. Old brother Babylon is worse than dessert. Okay? Because he's going to do it with authority. He's going to say, I be the authority on this. I have, I've read the Bible through one time from cover to cover, and I got her. I be the man, you know. But yeah, but that's apostate. Let me ask you something. Don't you have Almighty God? Why would you want some man or woman to lead you in study, or in by that I mean in in uh, writing scripture when you've already got the Father who has given you everything. Uh, that'd be a bad trade, wouldn't it? I'd say somebody's got discretion. It just fell out the bottom. Verse 16, to deliver these... I'm sorry, we got that. Okay, verse 17. For... Uh, did I finish that? I'll read it again. To deliver thee from the strange woman. That's Zer. Okay. Even from the stranger, let's make her in the upper words. I mean, draws you away into apostasy. We're speaking spiritual here, not flesh or physical, okay? 17, which forsaketh the guide of her youth and forgetteth the covenant of her God, her Father. Don't ever forget the Word of God. You're lost if you do. 18, for her house inclineth unto death, and her paths unto the death. Babylon is, that's what it is, confusion. None that go unto her um, return again, neither take the hold of the paths, the road of life, which is, um, it's the wrong road, okay? You've got to hang on to the road that God has told you to build. Rightly dividing, make the straight cut, and don't deviate. Well, we could give them this. No, we don't give them nothing. It's either truth, God's word, or it isn't. Okay? Twenty. 
Now, don't take from that. I said you should go out and insult somebody because they pronounce something different than you do or something like that. Use common sense, all right? It is the meanings. When they are changed, that's wicked, okay? 20. That thou mayest walk in the way of good men. Walk on what? Your own road. The same one that good men. And keep the paths, the roads of the righteous, those that try to do stuff right. Stay with the right crowd. For the upright shall dwell in the land, and the perfect shall remain in it. Uh, have you ever met one of them? Well, you have if you met the Lord Jesus Christ, all right? Because he is perfect. And he's going to walk those roads with us. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. They're not going to be here. Heaven's going to be on earth, and they're going to be gone. Um, I want to continue on just another verse or two. We've got time here. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. You, let your mind keep the word of God tucked away in it. His promises, his love for you. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. You'll, you'll grow in wisdom, in other words. That was the subject. Love him. And knowledge and wisdom follows. You'll grow in it. Okay? You might even grow up to be somebody someday. Okay? That's not a healthy thought. But the wisdom of God is really great. It truly is. Okay? You know what? When you say, when God says my, his tongue is a two-edged sword, when you go real skilled in the word, you really come down to the etymology of that analogy. Bear with me. Because his word, when you're really founded in it, you can just slice somebody however thin you want to. All right? With truth. And they'll have to like it. Why? It's written. It's the word of God. It's a powerful thing. But no one ever uses it for vengeance or anything of that nature, but only for love Harmony and correction. Verse 3. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. This is why some people write little notes and stick them in the cracks of walls. And things. Verse 4. So shalt thou find favor. You're going to find what? You'll find favor and good understanding. That means insight. In the sight of God and man. You know, hey, hey, they, that's, that impresses them, you know. It's like uh, me telling you all earlier that I sprayed the first cotton defoliate liquid. Well, it'll make a believer out of them. Okay? It'll impress people, all right? Verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, that your mind, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Don't, don't lean to your own discernment. Go with God's, the Holy Spirit, okay? You know, you get self-conceited if you're not careful. Wisdom is, wisdom is so powerful, and people search out that wisdom, some people get carried away with it. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, but dear brother, I'll be somebody. Yeah. Uh, you can call me Mr. Know-it-all. Okay. Have you ever known a know-it-all? Well, none of you have. I haven't either. <laughs> Someday maybe we shall. But that's, that's the point. Knowledge and wisdom are beautiful. Don't ever, don't ever use it for a wind of weight or something else, all right, for your personality or something. You, you don't need it if you have those truths. Just live them and practice them. Six, in all thy ways acknowledge him. And this, this is deep, friend. Don't do it simple. Hang on to it. In all thy ways. That's on all of your roads. Acknowledge him. Recognize him. 
then he shall direct thy paths. And what more could you ask for? I just don't know which way to go. Wake up! Wake up! He said, I will direct you if you'll love me, if you'll absorb my, wo- my word. You may even be somewhere someday and say, wonder what I'm doing here. Well, you better pay attention. He might have directed you there. There might be something there for you to do. Who knows? Now, I'm not getting super spiritual on you or anything like that. I'm just saying these are true promises. He, he said them. And, beloved, I believe them with all my mind and heart that our Father will never disappoint us in, uh, in His ways. Maybe in our ways He would, but not in His. If He makes a promise and you fulfill that promise, if you take care of all the ifs, I will do this if you will clean up your act. Okay? A lot of people forget to read that last part. You know. So anyway, those are powerful promises about building a road. And that being the etymology of orthoomio, okay? Cut it straight. Rightly dividing the Word of God. Don't put up with any malarkey. And I'm not throwing in negative terms here to slight the Word. I'm saying it is negative if you bring in the words of men into the Word of God. God is quite capable of speaking for himself. In conclusion, John chapter 14 in the New Testament. We've got to build this road. How do you know? What is your guarantee? Where's your starting mark? Are you a surveyor? Do you know how to plot out the ground and get it right? St. John chapter 14 verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. There's no need for you to ever have a troubled heart. We grieve, we hurt at times, but you do believe, and you know he's going to make it all right. This is Jesus' words just before he was uh, crucified, so to speak. In my Father's house are many mansions. The word is moni in the Greek, and it means resting places, not fancy houses. I mean, in my Father's in, in my Father's house are many resting places. You don't, don't try to fix the word mansion as we say mansion today. It will fit. won't fly. Okay? But you see, the beauty of this is, continuing, if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. He prepared that place through the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. That's your resting place. It's already ready for you if you'll partake of it and just step into it. Oh, but I've got so much to worry about. Step into it. Step into that place of rest. Step into Jesus Christ. His promises concerning the road, concerning the path. And get a, take, a, take, a weight, take the weight off your feet, friend. What do you carry all that junk around with you for anyway? He promised. It was a resting place called peace of mind. Relish it. Enjoy it. Build a road to it. And the most valuable thing in the world, take it and absorb it, that peace of mind. Well, I've got so many things to worry about. What? Well, about the people. To heck with them. You plant seeds and save those that you can. But you rest so that you and the example of your life draws people to you whereby you're going to convert more through success than the yatiti, yatiti, yatiti. Okay? You live your success. Verse 3, and I go and, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. It's a promise. And receive you unto myself, and where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know not, and the, I'm sorry, and whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Way is what? It's a road. You know the road. 
You know the roads of peace of mind, don't you? We've just studied about the, the, the uh, groundwork, the foundation of it in Proverbs. Okay? Loving God is the beginning of knowledge. Now, Thomas said in him, poor old doubter here, poor old Thomas, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. He had told him about three or four times. And, no, and how can we know the way? How can we know the road, the path? Jesus said to him, I am the way. I am the road, the truth, uh, and the life. No man. That, that's not a zippo, zero. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, if you listen to what I said, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Why? Well, because if you have seen the Son, you've seen the Father. Let us make man in our image. Christ was the image of Almighty God. He said, let us make man in our image. That means the Elohim is God and the angels. Plural. In the Hebrew tongue. He looks like it. He's been with you. You've seen him. That's hard for some people to understand. If you don't, just put it on the shelf. Be comfortable with it. Christ is Christ. That means Messiah, the anointed one. And he is the road. So to oversimplify this, simply, he showed you the way. He is the way. He is the right road. Listen to him. Absorb his teachings. Absorb his word, for he is the living word of God. And it is all knowledge and wisdom that helps you utilize common sense, whereby you have a good life, even in these flesh bodies. He prepared that resting place, money, for you today. Step into it. Enjoy it. Enjoy life. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for being that way, for being that road. We thank you for your many blessings. Father, be with us. We ask it in Yeshua's precious name. Amen.